So, uh, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to this lightning talk session uh, where you're going to learn about how you can accelerate PyTorch model performance with OpenVINO Toolkit. My name is Devang Agarwal and I'm a product manager for OpenVINO at Intel. Uh, I'm also joined here by Yamani Nimagadda, who is a principal engineer part of the OpenVINO architecture team at Intel. So uh, in today's session, uh, you'll, uh, first, we'll first start off with a brief overview of what is OpenVINO Toolkit. And then uh, we'll talk about the different paths uh, that exist in OpenVINO to accelerate performance of your PyTorch models. Uh, the first path is where you can directly bring your PyTorch models to OpenVINO uh, and, um, and do the inferencing using OpenVINO APIs. The second uh, path uh, to accelerate performance of PyTorch models with OpenVINO is uh, through uh, the uh, new re newly released OpenVINO backend in Torch.compile. Uh, and then finally, uh, we'll be talking about a generative AI application or project called Automatic 1111 Stable Diffusion Web UI. It's very popular out there right now. And we'll talk about how we have uh, integrated the Torch.compile OpenVINO backend uh, into this project and how uh, we'll, we'll also show a demo at the end that uh, shows the stable diffusion performance on our Intel Arc uh, G discrete GPU. So uh, let's start off with a brief overview of what is OpenVINO. So the uh, Intel distribution of OpenVINO Toolkit is a tool suite for high performance, deep learning, targeted at faster, more accurate real world results deployed into production across Intel architecture from edge to cloud. Uh, OpenVINO enables high performing applications and algorithms to be deployed in the real world. In addition, um, the path to inferencing with OpenVINO is simplified with a streamlined development workflow. With a write once, deploy anywhere approach, developers can write an application or algorithm once and deploy it across all our Intel architecture, including Intel CPUs, uh, Intel GPUs, uh, Intel VPU, and Intel FPGA as well. Um, also, additionally, uh, if you have a system with ARM-based CPU, you can also uh, leverage the OpenVINO um, uh, benefits on ARM CPU as well. And uh, as you might have heard recently uh, in uh, press, uh, Intel is also going to be releasing the Intel Core Ultra, which will be our NPU. And uh, we'll be, that'll be kind of, the developers will get their hands on this uh, sometime in Q1 of 2024. So OpenVINO will be supporting this uh, hardware as well. So now let's talk about PyTorch and how you can use your PyTorch models uh, with OpenVINO. So OpenVINO uh, itself allows you to directly load your PyTorch models and conduct inferencing using our OpenVINO APIs. So um, OpenVINO has this uh, API called Convert Model. So what this API does is it takes your PyTorch model, uh, you can load it into this Convert Model API, and it will inline or behind the scenes convert it to uh, an OpenVINO intermediate representation format. And this will uh, uh, basically do a lot of uh, graph optimizations on the model itself. Uh, and then uh, uh, finally it will uh, feed it to the OpenVINO runtime where the actual deployment or the inferencing will happen and you can select whichever hardware target uh, you want to deploy on. Uh, so what I just said, uh, we can actually look into this in a code snippet. Uh, so uh, from an application point of view, uh, it's very easy to use. Uh, first you have to just import OpenVINO and import Torch. And then uh, you can uh, uh, load your PyTorch model into the application using Torch APIs. And then uh, feed the Torch model to the OpenVINO convert model API, which will, uh, uh, of course, do the uh, PyTorch, to, uh, PyTorch model to OpenVINO intermediate representation format conversion in line behind the scenes. And then finally, we can feed the model to uh, uh, our compile model API, uh, which will essentially compile that model based on whichever hardware target you uh, specify for an OpenVINO. And then finally, you can do the inferencing on that hardware target. So as you can see, it's very easy to use in your application. It's very seamless and you can, um, you can get started right away. Um, and again, uh, you just have to write this code once and you can deploy across all our Intel architecture like our Intel CPUs, our Intel GPUs, and of course the NPU that's coming in uh, moving forward. Uh, OpenVINO also uh, supports uh, all different platforms like uh, Linux, Windows, and Mac OS. Um, and one uh, key benefit that OpenVINO has is that uh, you have the ability to also perform inference using C or C++ OpenVINO APIs. There is really no Python dependency. So if you're a C++ developer or you, uh, you like uh, developing in C++, you can uh, uh, use uh, your PyTorch models with OpenVINO in C++ as well. 
And finally, uh, what are the supported model formats with this flow currently is uh, Torch NN modules, Torch JIT script modules, and Torch JIT script functions. OK, so now I'll uh, pass the mic over to my colleague Yamini, who will cover the Torch.compile OpenVINO backend. Thank you, Devang. Uh, the direct conversion method that Devang just described provides a great way to accelerate uh, PyTorch models with OpenVINO APIs. But we went a step further to make it easy for the developers to quickly integrate and test their PyTorch applications with OpenVINO using the Torch.compile OpenVINO backend. So this backend basically enables acceleration of uh, PyTorch native applications on a variety of uh, CPUs uh, and both Intel integrated and discrete GPUs and the Intel NPU support is coming soon too. And this feature, as Devang mentioned, is supported both on Linux and Windows. And the user experience is uh, pretty seamless. All we need to do is uh, install OpenVINO from PyPy using pip install OpenVINO and adding two lines of code in the existing PyTorch applications, as you can see from the code snippet. It's basically the first line of code is importing OpenVINO.torch, and the second line of code is adding OpenVINO as a backend when the model is compiled with Torch.compile. And this backend also provides support for a wide range of models, mainly because uh, we have a graph partitioning mechanism that allows for unsupported operators to fall back onto native PyTorch runtime, which can execute on CPU. And all the supported parts, uh, they get accelerated with OpenVINO runtime, and uh, uh, we, we can see faster inference time. Now let's see how the OpenVINO backend works. Uh, OpenVINO is integrated as a Torch Dynamo backend. So when, when, the, when we provide the backend as OpenVINO with Torch.compile, Torch Dynamo, which is a Python level JIT compiler, which, is in, which was introduced in PyTorch 2.0, it basically um, dynamically transforms Python bytecode into FX graphs while using uh, Python fallback for all the sections of the programs that cannot be compiled with Torch Dynamo. So that can be represented uh, by the leftmost path in the diagram, as you can see. And for the parts that can be compiled with Torch Dynamo, uh, we get FX graphs, which we inline into an in-memory ATN graph. So the graph partitioner that is shown here in the OpenVINO backend, it traverses the uh, ATEN graphs and identifies the operators that are supported by OpenVINO. And all such operators, they, they are encapsulated uh, as OpenVINO graph modules, and they are translated and compiled into OpenVINO objects, which are then executed in the OpenVINO runtime on the specified target devices, which can be Intel CPUs, GPUs, or NPUs. So having this OpenVINO Torch.compile backend made it easier for us to integrate into several PyTorch communities. One such example is Automatic 11.11 Stable Diffusion Web UI, which is a popular repo uh, for, uh, with over 100k GitHub stars uh, for Stable Diffusion users. We support uh, several features like text-to-image, image-to-image, in-painting, LoRa, ControlNet, et cetera, on Intel CPUs and both Intel integrated and discrete GPUs. And uh, the, this support is available uh, for both Windows and Linux via a custom script feature. We also have the support in another popular uh, stable diffusion repo called st.next, uh, where OpenVINO Torch Short Compile backend is integrated by some of the open source contributors. Uh, in fact, we want to say special thanks to Disti for all, all his contributions into this repo. Uh, let's now see a demo of stable diffusion uh, on ARC 770 cli uh, client graphics. So here is the automatic 11.11 stable diffusion web UI. Uh, and we are generating the images of most popular landmark in SFO, the Golden Gate Bridge. We can see that the images can be generated in about two seconds on our 770 card. We will show you how we can stylize the Golden Gate Bridge with a SY3 bubble drip LoRa model downloaded from Civit AI. So here we start with one image, and then we increase the batch count to four. And we see the orange-blue bubble theme in the picture, which represents the stylization using the SY3 LoRa model. Now we can uh, see that uh, all the four images are being generated. And we can see the uh, display of all the four images. And we, we also support control net. So we, we can use control net for uh, exterior design. In this example, we provide a sketch that we want to transform to an exterior design of a house. So as we can see, uh, like we can actually transform this sketch to generate uh, various images with different backgrounds and details. But they look structurally uh, similar to the sketch. 
So that's a very uh, cool demo. Uh, and we would like to thank our colleagues uh, for their valuable contributions and support for all, uh, all the paths that we are exploring currently, optimizing PyTorch uh, with OpenVINO, both uh, with the direct conversion method as well as the Torch.compile OpenVINO method. Uh, and we encourage you to try out these options. And that concludes our presentation. If you have any questions, we can actually take them at the back. Okay. Thank you. <laughs>